All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sydney. I'm Molly. I'm Riley. I'm Kiana. And I'm Evan. And our product is a carbon nanofilter. By a show of hands, who drove here today? Interesting, interesting. <laughs> so all of you guys contribute to the rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> so carbon dioxide is currently a very prominent issue in today's environment as it accounted for 82% of all greenhouse gases in 2015. And 32% of those emissions came just from transportation. So this level of CO2 causes a major problem within the atmosphere as it can contribute to climate change as well as cost the global economy up to $45 trillion by 2050. So our solution is the carbon nanofilter. So our proposal is to use a recycled paper waste cellulose aerogel to capture the carbon from the exhaust before it's even emitted into the atmosphere. This would be, our filter would be able to capture and store carbon waste as well as biodegrade back into the soil to benefit the environment further. It would also benefit the consumer because they would be able to, like in heavily populated suburban cities such as the one that we live in, it's very difficult to maintain gardens or grass because the state of the soil isn't very good. So it would be, um, benefit the consumer by allowing them to both feel good about reducing the amount of carbon they're emitting into the atmosphere, but also help increase the nutrients in their own backyard. So the filter itself would be made using recycled paper waste, which would help reduce the amount of paper waste within landfills, and we would use that to create an aerogel. And within the aerogel, we would embed a nitrogen-doped copper metal organic framework to increase the storage capacity and increase the selectivity of what gases are captured. The filter is encased inside of the the filters encase inside of the exhaust pipe. As the gases flow through, the carbon dioxide is attracted inside of the sides of the tailpipe. Inside of the tailpipe due to the nitrogen-doped carbon me metal organic framework. The base component for the filter is a cellulose aerogel made from recycled paper waste. An aerogel is formed through the process of cross-linking and is categorized as a self-assembling material. The carbon waste flows through the tailpipe and is absorbed into the helices formed by the cross-linking monomers. One competitor this product foresees is the CO tube created by Vanderbilt University. This product is not biodegradable and requires maintenance. On top of that, this product did not receive the proper funding due to the lack of investments. Their product is planning to, was planning to be sold to online car owners themselves, whereas our product would be sold to the car manufacturers instead. This product would be marketed towards hybrid car manufacturers as an added bonus to, to promote the car's environmental capability. When the car is, is running off of the power provided by the internal combustion engine, the, fil the filter would do its job and filter out the carbon before it was, is released into the atmosphere. This, the cost of this filter would be added to the cost of the total, car, the, the, cold, the total car cost before being sold to the dealership, and the dealership would do the same and sell it to their customers with the filter included. Our market would primarily be the eco-friendly and hybrid car manufacturers. The product we would use with the trickle-down strategy into the everyday vehicles as the production decreases. We would start with the Snarrow uh, market, and then we would, as and as the availability in materials and technology increased, then we would um, distribute more on a wide scale. We kind of have the similar t uh, strategy to what the rear view, uh, the rear view uh, cameras, where they start on luxury vehicles and then trickle to almost every vehicle. It costs an estimated total of $57,600 to rent lab space for a year. In order to collect paper waste, we plan on obtaining a permit for $300 annually. The main machinery needed to build the filters costs an estimated total of $20,000, and the material to build 400 filters as a start estimates to a total of $14,010. This comes to a total of $91,910, but we would request $100,000 from investors to account for margin error in the startup. Our first year of the startup, we would like to do further testing on the biodegradability, and we'd also like to attain a permit, and then as the years go on, we want to finalize and test in a more practical, and then distribute to all the cars. Thank you. Thank you.
So I'll, I'll start. Um, paper's flammable. Uh, mm -hmm. Exhaust is hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our original idea, we started off, uh, we came up with the idea to use a hydrogel to uh, reduce the carbon waste from the exhaust pipe, but then we realized very quickly that that would not be feasible because it's liquid-based and that would evaporate due to the temperatures of the exhaust pipe. Um, there has already been studies uh, with cellulose aerogels, which is using plant-based materials to create the fibers uh, that promote absorption. So the cellulose fibers are not necessarily flammable in, in uh, the structure of the aerogel because it's not paper waste, it's the cellulose fibers derived from paper waste. My next question before I pass it on um, is, uh, how, what's the life cycle for the filter? Does it need to be replaced? How long would it last? And yeah. how would it be replaced? Um, so we expect that the filter would last probably around six months, four to six months, and the driver of the car would be able to go in for an oil check and they would replace the filter at the same time. And during that check, the uh, uh, they would take the filter out for the consumer and then give it back to them so that they could reuse it in their garden. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of science questions. Mm -hmm. So cellulose does burn, mm -hmm. but it I, I don't know the flammability point, and I don't know how hot a tailpipe is, so that may mm -hmm. be okay. But my bigger question relates to carbon dioxide absorption. So as far as I know, ooh, cellulose is not a great carbon dioxide absorber. The moths mm -hmm. that you talked about are better carbon dioxide absorbers, but usually they only work well at low temperature. So what kind of absorption do you expect at high temperature? And then, assuming that they will actually hold on to carbon dioxide at high temperature, then um, what is the biodegrading pathway? Like, where does that carbon dioxide eventually go when it starts to degrade? Is it just released back into the atmosphere? Or how does it end up sequestered? Um, so we read an article about, a scientific article about how nitrogen doping, uh, the carb, uh, copper metal organic framework, would attract carbon specifically to the filter. And so we planned on nitrogen doping the framework to uh, promote carbon absorption and then trap it within the framework. And then uh, in relation to the uh, biodegradability question, we plan on the ideal situation would be to bury the filter in the garden so that the carbon would be released into the soil instead of letting it sit on top of the soil. So it would not be released into the air, but rather into the um, dirt. So, sorry, I'll let other people ask, but just, did you have a, anything about the temperature where you can absorb carbon dioxide? Like where, what temperature it absorbs and what temperature it releases? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we actually, we looked into temperature, but we focused more on the sustainability of the aerogel within the exhaust pipe, and we found that the aerogel would sustain in the exhaust pipe, but we did not look into carbon dioxide capture at certain temperatures yet. What is the actual cost to the, to the manufacturer? Um, uh, we calculated that um, each filter would cost around $65.75 due to the m amount of material in the filter and production cost because is, each is filter the, only has about $35 is that worth the of material. Cost or your selling price? That would be our selling price because each filter would only uh, cost to make about $45. Okay. And that's there's just selling price for the manufacturer, and the manufacturer is mm -hmm. going to have to probably sell that to the consumer at some point. Yes. Right. So. Have you guys looked into how much this would impact the, the oil change cost, for example? Um, you know, what's the average oil change cost? Is it going to double it? Is it going to increase it by 50%? Have you guys looked into that? Uh, no, we have not yet. <sighs> well, okay, so basically what we're kind of doing is we want to sell our product to the manufacturers so they already have it within the car. And then when they go, the consumer goes with the uh, filter already in their car and then they go to get their oil change, just kind of like take it out and um, give it to them, so they're not necessarily doing a lot, and since the car manufacturers already have the um, product that they bought from us, it wouldn't necessarily alter the price signif significantly. So. 
Well, it's usually the it's the after aftermarket service, right? Oil change can be done at a dealership or mm -hmm. at Jiffy Lube, mm -hmm. for yeah. example, mm -hmm. right? And they're in there to make a margin mm -hmm. at retail, mm -hmm. right? Um, they're not going to give it away for free. It's mm -hmm. most besides BMW and some of the other higher end doesn't include service for the first three years, right? So <laughs> every six months, depending also on how much you drive, yeah, you may or may not go every six months. And if your thing only lasts is it by uh, number of miles you're driving, or is it by degradation associated with time? We looked into uh, miles driven, um, averagely, uh, on average, and um, how, like, time as well. We looked into both, and we came up with six months ideally, but we are not sure because we haven't tested in a real-life situation. I would look into, for sure, look into how it would impact the total cost of ownership now yeah. for, uh, for a consumer for the end consumer of this, right. because if it really increases the total cost of ownership significantly, then you'll have to relook at kind of the unit economics, right? right yeah. There. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about your initial target, and that I think I'm recalling correctly that it was for hybrid owners. Mm -hmm. So, have you thought about the guilt factor of marketing to non-hybrid owners? Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's an interesting initial target market because you could play the guilt trip factor <laughs> on them. So you don't have a hybrid car, but we can make it kind of work like a hybrid car. Right. So I, I'd be interested in hearing why you picked the hybrid as your initial target. Um, we chose hybrid cars because the customers who buy in the hybrid cars want an environmental, like, um, envi they want to be environmentally friendly, so they buy the car for it to be, be environmentally friendly. So that's kind of the aspect. And I don't think guilt would make somebody buy a car. <laughs> um, ideal, yeah. <laughs> um, ideally, we targeted hybrid cars as well. Ideally, we hybrid, uh, targeted hybrid cars as well um, because the consumer would be willing to pay a little bit extra to benefit the environment because, as mentioned before, it would be an added cost. It would increase the price of the car, and that would be a selling point for us. Do you perceive that there would be governmental um, regulations on it? Because state to state, there's environmental impact. And, you know, when you take your car in to get tested, smog tested, they, if there's any alter, alteration to your, to your car, they call you on it. And so how would you, how would you address that? Would you do that discovery first before you went to the manufacturers to make it sure it's an all clear? Oh yes, we would definitely test um, environmental impact before we marketed it, um, and we'd want to make sure that it was approved where we did market it so that it wouldn't um, cause backlash. And on a presentation, uh, great job, but I, I want to know what drew you to this and, and how did you split up the interests? Um, so like primarily, we all drive cars <laughs> and we kind of <laughs> we wanted to kind of like we were really focusing on doing something environmentally friendly because that's something that's a huge problem now and we did research and we actually found that people are starting to look into filters towards um, production like factories so we thought that since uh, cars actually contribute to a lot of the problems then it would be something that would really benefit especially since everyone uses cars We've got time for one more quick question, if there is one. And then, otherwise, otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you.